Hello and welcome to another walkthrough for Postgres SQL for everybody. In this walkthrough, I want to walk through the code for ElasticTool.py. So ElasticTool.py, of course, you still have to have your hidden calculation all set and put your credentials in. But if you compare this, let's see what I got here, to Elastic Book, which I which we've already run. Elastic Book uses a client library, this Elastic Search, that you have to do a pip install for it. And what I wanted to do in Elastic Tool is not use that. So you'll notice that I am, I, I, I'm going to talk JSON. I'm going to use the request library, and but I'm not going. I mean, hidden is where my secrets are at. But I'm not going to use the the built-in tool to do this. And so I want to show you that this is a REST web service. Elasticsearch is just a REST web service. And if we hit this REST web service with some rules, it's going to accomplish things. So we've already done Elastic Book, and so we've got stuff in there. Okay, and so if I run Python 3 Elastic Tool, we can see help. Um, so this is just a bunch of things. And so if you look through here, if you look at the basic code that I'm doing, I'm, I'm, I've written myself a, an interactive client where it enters a command and then it checks to see if I'm saying delete, if I'm saying match all, do this, do that. Okay, and so you can see all these things. So let me start by just typing the match all, which is just show me a first few records. But the interesting thing here is this is a URL that I'm just going to hit Okay, so I am constructing this URL from the secrets. And so this is by convention. So you'll notice that this is the database user. This is the database secret. This is the host. This is the port. This is that prefix thing. This is the name of the index. And then there are things you can attack, attach to the end of this. In this case, I'm sending it to search. So this is a URL that I'm going to do a post to. So if I look at match all in Elastic Tool, You see that I grab this URL. Now I'm, because I'm going to print it out, I'm taking the password out so you don't see the password. Um, but I'm adding the slash search. So the match all is what adds the slash search. And then what I'm going to do is I am going, that's just a URL now, and I'm going to create a bit of JSON. And I'm, I've, read, I've read the Elastic document, right? Go read the documentation for Elasticsearch, blah, blah, blah. Hopefully this URL still works. Yeah, there we go. And it's telling me this is the match all query. I'm supposed to hit the search, and I'm going to send it this thing right here. Okay, and you could go read up a bunch of stuff there, right? And so I've kind of got this, but I've got it in the form of a dictionary. But then I call dump s, so I can turn that into a string, because I have got to post this data right here into that, but that's got to be a string, not a, J, not a JSON object, or I mean a dictionary. Dictionary lives inside Python. The string is what we're going to send there. And so we're going to make some headers, which saying here we're incoming. You've got some application JSON with a UTF-8 character set, and then I'm going to send a post request. I'm just you know I'm talking to an API basically to the URL. And again, if we look at our URL, that's this URL. And I am sending, come back, come back, come back. I am sending this data, which is this query match all, which I found in the documentation, in with some headers, right? And the headers are telling it that the incoming content type. And then I just pull back response text and the response code. And if we look at it running, I, you see I got a 200. Now, I, I might not have got a 200. If I've got a bad password, right, it could be bad, like, well, I'll make a mistake then. And then I've got, this is the just monstrously a large amount of text that I got back, and that that's the stuff, right? Um, and so I can do something like I can take, uh, let's see, let's look for the word slant. I can say search slant. So let's see how many values we got, just one. All right, so if we take a look at the search code, Oh, 
finish the search. There we are. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm taking that URL and I'm adding search with pretty, but the difference is I'm sending, and pretty just says, come back, pretty just says format it pretty, right? So that's just question, that's a get parameter that I'm sending in. I mean, a, a, a URL parameter I'm sending in. And this time I'm sending a query of whatever that string was, which in this case was the word slant. And I'm making some JSON and I'm blasting that in. So I'm seeing the body. So you can see this is the post body that I'm sending in. And then I'm sending a header. And again, I post it with the data and the header. And I grab the response text and the response code and I print them and I print them in a pretty way, right? Search slant. Let's see what happens when I say search or something that does not exist. Yeah, so it, it still gave me a 200, um, but it found no records, found no hits, right? So the idea here is I want to show you how this is really just a, you don't need the client. The client is very convenient, very convenient. There's things it does for you. And um, and so the it, the client is very convenient. So let's see. Is there anything else I can show you? Uh, let me show you the one uh, one thing here is the the get command. Um, so each one of these documents has a primary key, and in the in the textbook loading one, I set this primary key, and so I can actually retrieve really efficiently with a primary key. And so if we look and we find the get command. Yeah, so it's what it's saying is here's the URL and underscore doc. Here, let's go ahead and read the documentation for a second. Read the documentation. It's, right, we're gonna grab the underscore doc for an index, this in this case is an index, and then we're asking for the ID. Well, the ID is the primary key, whatever that underscore ID value is, which you saw up here, ID value, right? Underscore ID value. And we're looking that up, put the ID in. Now this is the primary key at this point, right? It's the primary key. So the URL that it's going to do is that same thing, then add doc to it. And then the next parameter is just the primary key. And then we ask for it in a pretty format. And that doesn't really look very pretty but uh, away it goes. And so then we get a 200 because we find that one. And then we get back um, the actual document that got stored. So I think if I say get something, uh, found, I was hoping like, give me a 404, but it didn't. It just gave me back some JSON that said I could not find and I could not look up the thing that you're using. And so Elastic's tool is there for two purposes. One is to look around in the stuff that you've put in. And second, to show you that you can just use something like requests if you feel like it, and instead of using the um, whoa, the I Elastic book. It's like wrapper class called Elasticsearch that you can uh, use to get all that stuff. So again, Elastic Tool is a helpful little gadget, both as sample code and as something to actually look at your databases. It's like your PGSQL. I built it as a little PGSQL for Elasticsearch. Okay, so I uh, hope that this was uh, useful to you, and uh, see you online. Cheers.